Salam sejahtera. Yang berhormat Lim Guan Eng, Minister of Finance, Ministers, Chief Secretary to the Government, Deputy Ministers, High Commissioners and Ambassadors, Senior Government Officials, Group Chairman and Group CEOs of CIMB, Maybank and RHB Bank, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> Today, I'm asked to deliver a keynote address. <laughs> I must confess that I'm not an economist, but being Prime Minister, I'm supposed to know everything. So if I say something that is funny, laugh. <laughs> but if I say something that is wrong, don't giggle. I'm very happy to be here to see so many people at this forum. And this forum is about a new Malaysia. What is a new Malaysia? It is the same old Malaysia, but it has undergone a change that has not been expected over the last 61 years of its independence. Malaysia upon independence was very grateful to the political party which achieve independence for us. For a long time, we believe in this political party. But political parties may have very good intentions, but that does not mean that the leaders of political parties will actually do what is intended by them. And so, for the past 10 years or so, Malaysia experienced something that it had never experienced before. It had a government that did not care for the people or the country. And as a result, of course, the growth of the economy of this country lacked behind others. However, I must admit that in terms of GDP, the growth seemed to be all right. But GDP has been discoupled from the welfare, the well-being of the people. The people suffered from high cost of living, uncertainties, pressures applied by government on them, so much so that they no longer have faith in this country. They believe that there can be no change in Malaysia, that politically forever the party that won independence for Malaysia will rule this country. But on the 9th of May, a change took place, a democratic change, because the change was not brought about by revolution, civil wars, or an assassination. Instead, it was brought about by the simple casting of votes. Although the previous government believed that it would always win, that it will win the 14th general election, but the people, the vast majority of people thought otherwise. They thought that they had had enough 61 years of govern governance by one party. They thought that they would have a change. Although there was not much hope, 
that they would win the election. But the fact remains that on the 10th of May, the government changed. Changed without bloodshed, without violence. This is something. <laughs> this is something that Malaysians can be proud of. There were times when people say that Malaysia is not democratic. And sometimes we Malaysians too, including myself, believe that it, is, it was not democratic. But when a change took place, nearly by ticks on pieces of paper, voting slips, when the ticks were for a change, the country changed. In other countries, probably a change of government might lead to violence, but there was no violence when the government changed on the 10th of May this year. Now, having changed the government, the people, of course, expect something good to come. And it is this that brings us here to this hall. We are interested in finding out whether the government will deliver on its promises or not. It is going to be tough for this government because it inherited a country that has been completely disoriented. We have found that ministries, civil servants, no longer work as they used to work before, but they have become parts of the governing party. We also found, and this is most important of all, we also found that the country owed so much money that it was difficult even to pronounce the number of zeros that uh, we inherited as debt to this country. Now, somehow or other, we have to en ensure that debts are paid, that the government machinery will be cleaned up and restored to its original station. And so there have been many, many forums on economy, on economic growth. And the people are hopeful that this government will deliver. It has not been an easy time for the new government. Indeed, they have to handle things that they were not used to. Formerly, they were in the opposition, and in the opposition, of course, it's easy to point out the wrong things done by the government. Now they are the government. They had drafted a manifesto that is very great, but it is not the previous government which will have to implement the promises of the manifesto. The very party in the opposition which has won the election will have to deliver on the promises made in the manifesto. Now, Malaysia is a trading nation. And as a trading nation, we are affected by whatever happens to our markets. And our market is actually the whole world. Malaysia exports to almost all the countries in the world. But when these countries are in a state of turmoil, 
then that of course affects us as much as it affects the turmoil, the people suffering from this turmoil. We see a world in which wars are still being fought. We see a world in which trade wars are carried out. We see countries which had been associating with each other suffer from the withdrawal of one big member. And we see today money coming to us in many forms. We were used to cash with a nice pieces of paper on which the printed is printed the value of that piece of paper. That used to be our money. Now we have money coming to us in different forms. They come to us as uh, checks, as electronic transfers, entries in bank books, etc. No longer does the money come only in one form. And now, of course, there is this new money which I fail to understand completely. And this is the Bitcoin, virtual money, which somehow or other appreciates in value to tens of thousands. When it was launched, it was only valued at nine cents. Now it is valued at thousands of dollars. I must admit, I cannot use this money because I don't know what their value is. But now we are having more and more of this virtual money. And I'm quite sure it will affect the markets with who, of the countries with whom we trade. We would like to see a stable nation, a stable world where money has the value that is printed on it. But now, what is printed on the piece of paper no longer has any meaning. It is because the money can be, uh, can be used for other purposes. In our government, we hope that money is well managed. But in the previous government, although the government admits that cash is king, but we know now that cash is not king. The real kings are the voters. So even if you have money to give the voters, it's not necessary that they will vote for you. So money does not have the same value as it used to be. I am sure you have debated all these issues during the course of this debate, which was uh, arranged, organized by the banks. Of course, the banks would like to know what the government will be doing. Well, what the government is doing now is, of course, to pay our debts. How do we pay debts where the money has completely been lost? In the usual uh, situation, money is used in order to invest. And we know where the money is invested and we can pull out or we can receive dividends but now we don't know where the money is. So we have to find other sources of funds. Now it was suggested that we should have new taxes. I don't think that is something that is welcomed by the people. But we may have to devise new taxes in order to have the money to pay our debts. Of course, the other thing that we can do 
is to sell our assets. What are our assets? Land is one of them. The previous government land sold a lot of Malaysian land to foreigners. I don't think that would be good for us. But we can still sell land to locals so that they can develop the housing projects and the settlements that they believe would give them a return. More beyond that, we may have to sell some of our valuable assets in order to raise funds to pay the debts. But as I said just now, it's not only the money, it is the instrument, the machinery of government which has been tampered with. It no longer functions and we have to find ways to rebuild the government and it has not been easy because new people taking up high posts may find difficulty in performing. So this is the problem faced by Malaysia today. But nevertheless, we are hoping problems that in, in time we would restore the finances of this country and in time we will rebuild the government machinery which had been destroyed by the previous government. We feel we can do that because Malaysians have proven that they can go through a lot of problems, economic problems, and yet survive. One of the things that we survived from was the financial crisis of 1997-98. We found our own solution and we recovered. Now the situation is almost the same, except that in the last crisis, the money was devalued. And when money is devalued, we become poor. This time it's not about devaluation so much. Our currency has remained quite strong. It moves a little up and down, but it is still quite strong and acceptable as money. But the problem that we face now is that we have to find money to pay huge debts incurred by the previous government. We believe we can overcome this. In the meantime, there is a necessity to grow the economy. If we grow the economy high, at a high rate, then the debts will appear smaller than it is now. The GDP ratio to uh, the loss would be resolved through the increasing or increasing the economy or growing the economy of this country. And for this purpose, we have invited investors. During my trip to UK and America, I met a lot of big companies interested in investing in Malaysia. And I believe that in time they will come and their investment will contribute to the growth of this country. And when the growth of this country is high, then we will, the debts will not appear so big in terms of the economy of this country. That is our hope. As I said, I'm not an economist, but uh, I have to work with economists. Uh, if they tell me something, it's difficult for me to say no because I don't know what they are talking about. <laughs> Still, despite not knowing economy, 
we have a record of having grown this country quite well to the point where we became one of the Asian tigers. Now the tiger is a very small kitten. <laughs> it is hoped that with forums like this, with people throwing up ideas, with the government being receptive of ideas coming from the people, and the government is able to implement those ideas, I'm quite sure that this country will grow and grow to become yet another tiger. It's not the title that is important. I do hope that when you have your forum here, your discussions, you have come up with ideas. I will have to be brief on this by the participants later, and we will see how many of these ideas can be implemented by the government. But one thing is certain, this government will be business friendly. Business people create wealth. Government does not create wealth. Government simply tax the wealth of people. <laughs> and government does not have to invest because according to the law, 24% of your profit belongs to the government. Please remember that. <laughs> if we are nice to you, it's because we are looking at the 24%. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know whether what I have said can be regarded as a key address to you, but I'm voicing my own frustrations, my own problems, and the work that is needed in order to overcome the problems left over by the previous government. So I wish that you will have, you had a very useful discussion here where all the experts will tell about their own ideas on how the country can recover. And I do hope that from these ideas, we will implement in order to rebuild the economy of this country. I thank you. Thank you, Yamaha Holma, Dun, Dr. Mahadev.